Hey everyone, how's it going? So in the last video, we looked at how Moltres fared against Red and Blue, and in the end, turns out not all that great. Which is shocking because it has such an advantage in terms of its stats. And speaking of which, if we were to compare Moltres' stats to our current Pokemon, Articuno, Moltres actually comes out on top. It has much better attack, slightly better speed, although they do have the same special. Nonetheless, Articuno has a massive, massive advantage to Moltres, and that is it starts off with Ice Beam. Now, Ice Beam is arguably the best ice move of all time. I mean, it's debatable whether that's true or not, but consider it's not supposed to miss, and it's 95 base power in this generation. That's pretty incredible. And the fact we start with it is going to make a massive difference because remember how Brock we had to do some extra battles and it was still difficult? Yeah, this is Brock with Articuno. Yeah, pretty easy. And as you could tell, I'm still at minimum battles. So Ice Beam is incredibly useful. But like with Moltres, we're not getting any other moves via level up until much later on. So we are going to have to deal with just having Ice Beam and Peck for the foreseeable future. That said, there's another advantage to Ice Beam that we often overlook. And that is in Red and Blue, there are very, very few Pokemon that resist ice types early on sure we're gonna have to deal with misty but the only types that resist ice in generation one are water and ice almost no one uses ice types and there are very very few water types we actually have to battle throughout the entire game to be perfectly honest so for that reason articuno despite its minor stat disadvantage is looking like it's going to be way closer to mewtwo than to moltres and as we get to Cerulean, and I save before Rival 2, we are at 30 minutes, which is practically tied with Mewtwo, so that's a very good sign. However, since Articuno is in the slow level up group, Pidgeotto outspeeds and uses Sand Attack, which is annoying. I still hit with Ice Beam and it's a one-hit KO, but this can make the battle irritating. Thankfully, Ice Beam neither misses, nor does it take multiple hits to knock out Abra or Rattata, but it does miss against Squirtle, and it misses quite a few times. As you can see, Squirtle does like next to no damage. So that's why I said irritating and not difficult. And now we can skip on ahead. Surprisingly to Misty, yes, even though there's a type resistance, I am gonna battle Misty here. It's much quicker and I'll get the TM for Bubble Beam, which shockingly, Articuno can learn. It's the only of the legendary birds that can learn another attack that is not a type it is or normal type. Star U is pretty easy. Ice Beam, Misty goes for X Defend. Another Ice Beam, it's knocked out. Star Me I'm a little more worried about because of Bubble Beam, even with my high special. However, in this battle, Star Me does not go for Bubble Beam a single time. It obviously could have. I'm going to end up with around 30 HP. So it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Plus, as we know, Ice Beam could freeze. And I do hit with Ice Beam four times. I opt to go for Peck for really no other reason than to say I used Peck in this battle. And so while I did get a little lucky, I think it's still pretty clear that Articuno matched up surprisingly well against Misty, and we can continue on and eventually battle rival number three on the SSN. Now I do want to note we are still at minimum battles here, and because of all the trainers we've been forced to battle up to this point, we are able to outspeed Pidgeotto and knock it out with a single Ice Beam. Raticate goes for Quick Attack, and it does next to nothing. Ice Beam is a one-hit KO. I wasn't sure if Ice Beam would one-hit KO Kadabra due to its massive special, but I get a critical hit, so I guess we'll never know. And now, War Turtle wouldn't have been a problem anyway, but I get a Lucky Freeze. In Generation 1, the only way you can be unfrozen other than using an item is by the other trainer, in this case me, using a Fire-type move, except for Fire Spin. Any Fire-type move that can cause Burn, or Haze, which I also would never use. So essentially, when you're frozen in Generation 1, you're frozen until the end of the battle. This is not the case anymore. There are both moves you can use that automatically unfreeze you, as well as having a 20% chance now, previously a 10% chance to randomly unfreeze every single turn. I've been frozen a few times in these runs, and I haven't really gone into the full mechanics of it, so I figured now's as good a time as any. But all right, shifting focus back to the run itself, I have yet to lose a single battle. Will that continue as I attempt to battle Lieutenant Surge? Obviously, it's faster if I don't have to come back. So even though we have a type disadvantage, I do think that with Ice Beam, I should be able to win. 
Let's see if that's true. Well, right off the bat, the worst possible thing happens. Volter about speeds, and it hits me with Sonic Boom. That's 20 HP right off the top that I otherwise usually would expect to have. That's not great. I knock it out with Ice Beam in one hit. Pikachu comes out, and I outspeed and knock it out with Ice Beam in one hit. But now I'm a little worried about Raichu. It obviously outspeeds and goes for Thundershock. I still have 25 HP left, and Ice Beam looks to be a 2 hit KO, so as long as it doesn't use Thunderbolt, I should win, but it does, and I lose. So that's not a big deal, because as you see, the battle can also look somewhat like this. It turns out me and Voltorb were speed tied, meaning it was a 50-50 chance that either of us went first. Voltorb went first last time, I go first this time, knock it out with Ice Beam. I still outspeed Pikachu and knock it out with Ice Beam. And then, since Lieutenant Surge just randomly attacks, he goes for X speed, and then misses with Thundershock. That's a 1 in 256 chance of happening. So, this was the best luck that I possibly could have gotten. Can we get a battle somewhere in between? Well, sure, I reset because, I mean, come on, the chances all those things happen were pretty low. Alright, Voltorb does go first, but it doesn't go for Sonic Boom. It has two other moves, so it's a 66% chance it doesn't go for Sonic Boom. I knock it out. Obviously, Pikachu, Ice Beam, 1 hit KO. Now we have Raichu. This time, it goes for Thundershock. And another Thundershock. I get paralyzed, but thankfully, the second Ice Beam connects. And, I don't know, I've done this enough times. Clearly, if it used Thunderbolt both times, I would be knocked out. Maybe for consistency, it would be just a little bit smarter to come back and waste the, I don't know what, 30 seconds or so it would take to walk to the gym from the Pokemon Center. Additionally, I could have bought another potion to be at full health. I miscalculated how much HP I would lose during the rival battle. The reason I don't just heal at a Pokemon Center is because to get back to Cerulean quicker, I can just dig. I used to go to Diglett Cave, but thank you to Wartab, a Pokemon speedrunner with world records in a lot of the modern games, he told me you can actually dig from the building you get the bike voucher from. That saves a little bit of time, and hey, we're trying to beat Mewtwo here. Time is very important. And in case you're wondering, we already have a five minute deficit, so not sure if that's gonna happen, but hey, we can dream, right? And there actually is one way I can make up just a little bit of time due to a mistake I made in the Mewtwo run. If you remember, as I head to Celadon, the route I want to do is Game Corner, Pokemart, which you actually need to go to to get the drink to go to Saffron, HM for Fly, Lavender, Erica, rest of the game. And last time I actually forgot to heal at the Pokemon Center in Celadon, which wasted a little bit of time. I didn't forget this time, hooray! So that might narrow the gap a little bit. Anyway, the battle with Giovanni is exactly as difficult as you would expect. Super effective against Onix, 1 hit KO. Super effective against Rhyhorn, 1 hit KO. I'm using Bubble Beam because I'm almost out of Ice Beam power points. Is one gonna be enough for Kangaskhan? Well, not if I get a Generation 1 miss. Amazing. But thankfully, I get a critical hit, and it's only a 2 hit KO with Bubble Beam. So it wasted a little bit of time, but the battle was never in doubt. And so we can cross Game Corner off of our checklist. Then I'll get the Freshwater, I'll get Fly, Fly to Lavender. Another reason that beating Lieutenant Surge first is such a big deal, because we can Fly to Lavender right away. And now we can battle rival number four, which I don't anticipate being too difficult, but, you know, don't want to be overconfident. Ice Beam is a 1 hit KO against Pidgeotto, and I do outspeed. Now, here's where I make a mistake. I hit up to wrap around to what I think is Bubble Beam, because it's been there the whole time. But now I know Fly, so I accidentally use Fly, and it's not even a 1 KO, so that wastes a little bit of time. Not the best, but whatever. I use Bubble Beam to knock it out the next turn. Ice Beam 1 hit KOs both Execute and Kadabra. And for War Turtle, I'm curious how much damage Fly will do. It does about half. So does Ice Beam. The battle was never in doubt, so I was right, it wasn't too difficult. And this is a pretty good indication that Ice Beam is almost always going to be the better move from here on in. And there's nothing really that interesting going on in the Pokemon Tower, so let's skip ahead to Erica, who I always seem to forget, but thankfully I did remember. I don't think it should be overly surprising how the battle went. Ice Beam, Ice Beam, Ice Beam. I outlevel her Pokemon, I outspeed, and there wasn't too much of a doubt in my mind that Ice Beam would want to KO. 
So now we finish what I consider to be part two. I actually divide the run up into four parts in my mind. And now we head to the longest part, part three, that often begins with getting surf from Safari Zone. And then I have to decide where I go to next. Well, while risky, it is technically faster if I go to Sylph Company first. At least potentially, it has to do with backtracking and getting that rare candy from the Warden's house. So I am going to go to Sylph Company and try and battle the one, the only, except for the other six times, Rival Fievel. Now, I'm severely underleveled, and unlike Mewtwo, my speed is not incredible. So I get outsped, hit by Sand Attack, and Ice Beam misses. Again, Pidgeot goes for Sand Attack, very annoying, but Ice Beam hits and knocks it out. That's one down. For Growlithe, simply to save power points, I go for Bubble Beam, and it's not a one-hit KO. Growlithe uses Ember, does very little, and then Bubble Beam knocks it out. Thankfully, I haven't missed yet. Next is Execute. Obviously, Ice Beam will one-hit KO if it hits, and it does. Now out comes Alakazam. Of course, it's going to outspeed me. Goes for Psy Beam. Doesn't confuse me. Ice Beam looks to be doing about half. It then goes for Confusion, which is better. Also doesn't confuse me. And Ice Beam misses the range and just doesn't knock it out. That sucks. Then I miss Ice Beam. It goes for Disable, which is the best case scenario. Disables Fly. But then it's able to hit me again with Psy Beam. I'm down to 13 HP. Peck knocks it out. But there's no way I'm going to knock out Blastoise unless I get a Lucky Freeze. Well, I get a miss, and Blastoise knocks me out. And you should know, I actually tried this about five more times. This was the best attempt, if you'll believe it. So, it's not going to work to go to Silk Company. So let's go back to Fuchsia City and see if we can defeat Koga first. Now, Koga starts off not too bad. He leads off with Coughing. Ice Beam almost knocks it out in one hit, but Koga goes for X Attack. And I can just use Peck to knock out Coughing. Muck, I'm doing just over half damage with Ice Beam. Again, Koga decides X Attack is the right move. Sure, whatever. Knock it out with another Ice Beam. Now, remember how I said I almost knocked out Coughing number one? Well, now that I'm a level higher, Ice Beam does knock out Coughing number two, and we have just one Pokemon left. Now, Ice Beam does just under half, and Koga uses Sludge. I do get poisoned, but I think, you know, it'd be really quick if I use Fly and then he self-destructs because if I get hit by self-destruct, I would actually lose the battle. Well, I do that and Koga doesn't cooperate, but he does use an X attack when I land, allowing me to use another Ice Beam and there goes the battle. But now if I want to stick to minimum battles, I only have one trainer left I can battle, Rival Fievel. I have leveled up, but is that enough to make the battle consistent? Let's see. Well, right off the bat, a major, major difference. I not only outspeed Pidgeot, but Ice Beam is a one-hit KO. That right there completely changes the complexion of this battle. Now, remember, Bubble Beam wasn't a one-hit KO on Growlithe either. This time it is, but I got a critical hit. I'm not really sure if it mattered or not, but I'll take it nonetheless. Now, obviously, Execute will still be a one-hit KO with Ice Beam. I get much better luck with Alakazam. It goes for Confusion. I don't get confused. Ice Beam is doing about half. Then it goes for Disable, which fails, and I knock it out with Ice Beam. So I have 100 HP to face Blastoise. That should work. And Blastoise has very bad attacking moves. Its best move is Bite, and it does next to nothing. You might question, why go for Ice Beam over Fly? Well, because Blastoise uses Withdraw. So that's not a very good strategy. I actually get a critical hit on my third Ice Beam. So that means Blastoise did all of 9 HP of damage. And this just shows you how powerful legendary Pokemon are. Just a few levels higher and the battle goes from impossible to easy. And as I show the Giovanni battle, I now have to make a decision whether I want to go to Sabrina and battle her first. Or do I want to try my luck in Cinnabar? There is the TM for Blizzard located in the Pokemon Mansion. And of course, that's an ice move that does way more damage. So how am I going to proceed? The answer I came up with is kind of both. I'm going to go to Cinnabar first and go through the Pokemon Mansion. Of course, you need to get the secret key to get into Blaine's gym, but I will pick up Blizzard and teach it to Articuno. I'm not going to battle Blaine yet because Fire Blast is, well, very scary. It is a super effective move. So instead, I'm going to go back to Saffron. I did buy a Poké Doll earlier when I bought the Freshwater, and I'm going to go get Mimic. Like the other Legendary Birds, Articuno could have a better move pool, even though it is the best of the three, but Mimic will help in situations where the moves that I have available to me just aren't enough. And obviously, since I'm in Saffron, I'm going to go battle Sabrina. 
you can skip every single trainer in her gym. I'm still at minimum battles. But as I save in front of Sabrina, we're at 2 hours 30 minutes. Does not look like we're going to be able to pass Mewtwo, but maybe we can make it respectable. So she leads off with Kadabra number 1, which already outlevels me. I was thinking about Fly versus Ice Beam. I was worried Fly wouldn't be a 1 at KO, and that would cost a lot of time. I went for Ice Beam. It's doing just over half. Kadabra goes for Psy Beam. It does somewhat decent damage, I guess, and I knock it out with an Ice Beam. Now, for Mr. Mime, it knows both Reflect and Barrier. Fly would be a very poor idea, so I go for Ice Beam. It does very good damage. It goes for Barrier, like I said, and I use Ice Beam. Mr. Mime is down. Now, Venomoth, I figure, because it's weak to flying, just go for Fly. Well, I do, but it still isn't a 1 KO. Venomoth goes for Psy Beam, which does next to nothing, and I knock it out the very next turn. So now I have 90 HP, but Alakazam is the one I'm super, super nervous about. It has Recover, great special. It's honestly one of the scariest Pokemon pre-Elite 4. Now, as you can see, I haven't actually taught Mimic yet. I've taught Toxic for this battle, thinking maybe Alakazam will stall me so I can use Toxic and Fly. It misses, then I'm like, you know what, whatever, I go for Fly. Alakazam, of course, outsped, but used Recover twice at full HP. Just great tactic, but goes to the point that it does like to stall. Fly hits and is a critical hit, which is excellent. Alakazam can also use Reflect, and that would have been very helpful, but not the case here, obviously. Now, here I had a choice. Do I go for Ice Beam and hope it doesn't recover, or do I go for Fly and hope it doesn't go for what it did, Reflect, and then recover? The worst combination. Sorry, I spoke too soon. I miss with Fly. That is, without a doubt, the worst turn of events that could have happened. And honestly, you're going to see this was dumb. Alakazam uses Psy Wave, which thankfully does next to nothing. I go for Ice Beam. That did great damage. It would have been maybe a 2 at KO. Just use Ice Beam. Just use Ice Beam. It goes for Psy Beam. Gets a critical hit. I tank it on a mere 8 HP, and I knock it out with Ice Beam. A combination of bad luck and honestly just very poor strategy on my part. But hey, that's what happens on the first battle. Oftentimes you guys are seeing battle 2 or 16. But in battle 1, I'm just figuring out what the best strategy is. And hey, I did win. And that's now 6 badges in the books. But in this run, since I am ice type, I'm very scared about Blaine. I'll remind you once again, fire does not resist ice in generation 1 only. So I could potentially use Blizzard again. I've picked up the TM for it and Mimic, but I haven't taught it yet because... I do like to teach TMs as late as possible, since that gives me the most amount of flexibility going forward, since there is no way to relearn moves in Generation 1, except for Ice Beam I could get the TM at the Celadon Mart, but I'd rather not do that. Anyway, I decide to not teach Blizzard in my first battle with Blaine, and I just want to see how it goes. So he sends out Growlithe, I decide to go for Bubble Beam. Now, if you do the math, Ice Beam is a better move by a little bit. Unfortunately, for whatever reason at the time, I just didn't think about that, and went for the instinctive water equals super effective, should use that move. But no, 65 times 2 is 130, 95 times 1.5 is 142.5. Rewatching this footage is really frustrating because I can't believe I didn't figure this out, but hey, this is the battle. So Blaine leads off with Growlithe, I use Bubble Beam and get a critical hit, knocks out Growlithe in one hit. Now against Ponyta, had I used Ice Beam, I probably would have knocked it out. Bubble Beam was a bad choice. Again, it's my first battle. I'm just trying to try things out. And of course, it goes for Fire Spin, which takes like five years. I'm not allowed to attack while Fire Spin hits. But Blaine is allowed to heal, which he does, to pretty much full health. And I use Bubble Beam. So Blaine again hits with Fire Spin. I could never get that luck with Moltres. Eventually, though, I get out of Fire Spin again, use Bubble Beam, and down goes Ponyta. Alright, well, unsurprisingly, I use Bubble Beam against Rapidash. It's doing about half, so it or Ice Beam would have been a 2 at KO. Unfortunately, and I rarely say this, Blaine uses the Retroactive Super Potion, so he heals, meaning it's going to be at least a 3 at KO. I go for Bubble Beam again, Rapidash's speed falls again, it goes for Fire Spin, finally get a miss, and I knock it out with Bubble Beam. But now we have our canine, it knows Fire Blast, and if it uses it, that could be very, very bad. Especially because I only have 64 HP, so I go for Bubble Beam once again, and once again, Blaine goes for a Retroactive Super Potion. Now this is looking to be a 3 or 4 hit KO anyway, so you think it wouldn't matter what move I used, but you'd be wrong. Very wrong. Had I used Ice Beam, that would have knocked out our canine, and it punishes me with a critical hit Ember, and I just barely once again survive on a sliver of HP, Bubble Beam knocks it out, and yeah, probably the most frustrating battle I've ever had to watch during voiceover, 
since it's just so obvious I should have used Ice Beam, it would have made the battle quite a bit faster. But hey, mistakes are made. Sometimes I just go into autopilot and I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, and it's unfortunate, but can't complain about a win, now can we? Speaking of which, we have one more gym leader to go, Giovanni, and, well, I'm not anticipating this being overly difficult. The only question is, do I outspeed Dugtrio, but otherwise, we have one! I don't outspeed the Dugtrio, but two, three, four, five, five ice beams! Ha ha ha! And just to make it clear, for those of you who think, oh, he's just doing that to make it a meme or something, no. Literally, way before I started doing this in videos, every time I'd get a battle like this where it'd be really quick, I would do the Count Von Count voice from Sesame Street in my head, and that's why I brought into the videos. It, it is kind of a staple now of easy battles, but yeah, nothing much to say. As we head towards Rival 6, we're at 2 hours and 48 minutes. We're still at minimum battles. I will admit right now, I know there's no way I can beat Mewtwo because it takes about 20 minutes just to get through the Elite Four and we haven't even beaten rival number six, but I could possibly make it very close, which is very, very cool considering how terrible Moltres was. But if anything is going to give me a problem, it's the Elite Four and maybe even this battle. Does it? Let's see. Well, like I've done in many other battles, I opt to try and mimic agility in order to use Say it with me, the badge, post, glitch. And I'm not really going to go into what it is here because as you're going to see, it doesn't make a big impact on this battle. I go for Blizzard, not because I need the extra damage, but because I didn't actually heal at the Pokemon Center, since it will save a little bit of time and I think this battle still should be winnable. That said, after I knock out Pidgeot, I decide to use Ice Beam against Dryhorn, and obviously it's going to be a one-hit KO. And remember how I said you don't have to worry about the badge boost glitch? Well, I level up, and the badge boost glitch goes away after you level up. However, I only did use two agilities, so I use a third one here. Growlithe goes for Ember, I get burned. Not really a big deal, since I don't plan on using Fly anymore. I then go for Blizzard and knock out Growlithe. Next, I use Ice Beam to one-hit KO Execute. Now, since I've used those agilities, I will outspeed Alakazam. I go for Blizzard and I get a critical hit, but it's not quite enough to knock out Alakazam. It goes for Reflect and I use Ice Beam, so I guess it's good I didn't use it against Pidgeot because I had that power point left for Alakazam and no risk of missing. But now we have to deal with Blastoise. I'm actually kind of nervous because Hydro Pump will do decent damage and I'm not sure how much Blizzard will do and I don't have a ton of power points left. But hey, first turn critical hit, that's not too bad. But then it does use Hydro Pump and with the burn, I will now be knocked out if I'm hit by another one. So that's really bad. So basically I need anything but Hydro Pump here or Blizzard to miss. It doesn't and it freezes. Okay, a little bit lucky. Truth is, I probably would have won either way. Hydro Pump could always miss. It's just a one in four chance that he uses it. But why dwell on what could have happened? We won, we're at minimum battles, we're just behind Mewtwo's pace, and we're heading to the Elite Four. I can't imagine any trainer of the Elite Four being difficult for Articuno, with its main move being Blizzard. Not one. Could you? Well, I don't want to rest on my laurels and lie to you all that there isn't a trainer, because there is. Laurelly. And as I save just outside our room, we're at 3 hours and 3 minutes, the final end time for Mewtwo. So obviously no way to pass him, but it looks like we're going to make it really close. That is, if we can beat the rest of the Elite Four without having to do any extra battles. We're still at minimum battles, by the way. So my first attempt, I want to see how much Fly is going to do. And what's that, an eighth? And it hits me with Growl. So yeah, I'm going to be doing less than an eighth. Perfect. Well, here is the bigger problem. Fly is a two-turn attack, and Dugong will use Rest, quite frequently actually, and that restores its HP to full. So, I'm going to need a way to defeat Dugong a lot quicker, and it's not like I have many other options. So I guess I'll just keep trying to go for Fly. If I get a critical hit, that would be super nice, but it keeps using Rest and Growl. Eventually, I'm like, you know what? My special is higher, and Growl is increasing my special. Yeah, that's how the badge boost glitch works. Every time your stats are modified, your other stats get boosted by an additional 12.5%. And so even though it's double resisted, Ice Beam is doing more damage than Fly, and it takes a really long time. Dugong barely attacks, and slowly but surely, I do knock out Dugong. 
Now, Cloyster is pretty low special, so I go for Blizzard and does about a third, which is pretty good. It goes for Spike Cannon, and of course it has to hit five times. Go for Blizzard again and get a critical hit, still going to be a 3-8 KO, so it didn't actually make a difference. Goes for Clamp, doesn't last too long. Thankfully, I don't miss with Blizzard, and 3-hit KO on Cloyster. And now, I can mimic Amnesia like I did with Moltres, and maybe I'll actually win? So, I do exactly just that. I get hit with one Water Gun, and Slowbro does use one Amnesia itself, but Blizzard is doing half damage, even though it's resisted. I use another Blizzard, and that knocks out Slowbro. Now out comes Jinx, and it actually is a one-hit KO with Blizzard. Not bad at all. But then I level up, so my Amnesias are still going to count, but those additional little boosts I got from Growl, those are no longer counting towards my special. But I do next to nothing against Lapras. Why is that? Well, when you get a critical hit, all your boosts are ignored, so that's actually the worst-case scenario. But don't worry, it's not like I'm going to get another critical hit. Oh my god. And yeah, Lapras knocks me out. So that's very annoying, but I actually have no idea how much Ice Beam would have done otherwise. But it doesn't really matter, because I got extremely lucky against Dugong. I mean, if he used Rest just a few more times, and don't forget, opponents don't have Power Points, so Laura Lee could literally just use Rest as much as she wanted. And I'm just simply not doing enough damage to really do anything about that. So, throughout my experience, I've picked up Rare Candies. There are six that aren't too out of the way, and I've picked up all of them, so may as well use them. Sure, we didn't have to use any with Mewtwo, so we won't be at the lowest possible level, but it's still better than having to resort to extra battles. Alright, so here's what I decide to do. I go for Ice Beam, it does next to nothing, but I'm betting Laura Lee will go for Rest, which he does. So that means I have a free turn to go for Fly, and I'd really like a critical hit. Well, wouldn't you know, I get one here. Just so you know, it's a 17% chance to get a critical hit on any given attack, and I didn't need to be the first one, but I do need Dugong not to go for rest now. Goes for takedown, that's good. I go for fly, it hits. Dugong goes for takedown, which is going to deal a little bit of recoil damage. And now I have to make a choice. Do I risk missing with Blizzard and it not knocking it out? Do I risk Ice Beam? I went for Fly, thankfully it didn't go for Rest, and there goes the scariest Pokemon, Dugong. I don't think I've ever said that before, nor will I probably say that again. And against Cloyster, you get to see how powerful the Badge Boost glitch really is. I'm at a way higher level, but look how much less damage Blizzard does. Again, every time she used Growl in the previous battle, that was a 12.5 boost to my special. I don't have that this time. Anyway, all I don't want to see here are Super Potions or Super Sonic. She misses with a couple attacks, and then goes for Supersonic, it misses. Cloyster can be a forward KO, I don't get the ranges I need, but whatever, I knock it out with Ice Beam, and down goes Cloyster, and now I should be good, so long as something crazy doesn't happen. Now, I don't mind if Slowbro attacks me, but not using Amnesia would be great. It does not use Amnesia as I mimic and then set up my three Amnesias. I use Ice Beam, and I knock out Slowbro. Don't even have to use Blizzard. Same thing goes for Jinx, it's only a single resistant. Perfect. And I don't level up now because I'm at a much higher level. The reason I wanted to use Rare Candies, by the way. But in case you thought things were going too well, I get a critical hit with Blizzard. That's not what I want. Miss with Hydro Pump's okay. I then hit with Blizzard, just doing just over half damage. And of course, Confuse Ray. Oh my god. Like, I can't catch a break. Unfortunately, that's all for my Blizzard Power Point, so I have to go for Ice Beam. It's not doing nearly as much damage. And Laura Lee uses a Super Potion. Amazing. Maybe this will knock it out. Nope, survives on a sliver of health. But at least I'm not hitting myself in Confusion. Laura Lee heals again. Now, if I don't hit myself in Confusion, I will knock it out. Unless I get a critical hit. Lovely. And then Lapras goes for Body Slam, and I get paralyzed. Oh my. Well, it goes for Confuse Ray. I'm already confused, but I snap out of Confusion when I attack. I don't get paralyzed, and yeah. That ending was a little more interesting than I'd like, but whatever. We've gone past Laura Lee. I don't know if the rest of the Elite Four will be smooth sailing, but she was the one I was most concerned with. Now, one of the things I do, but never talk about, is using Elixirs and Full Restorers, and I do that at very specific points. I forgot. And that's going to make Bruno not hard, but slightly more annoying, because I don't have any Blizzards and only four Ice Beams left for five Pokemon. Amazing. So I use it against Onix, of course. Hitmonchan doesn't have great defense, so I opt to go for Fly. It also has really bad attacks, so it's the one I'm least concerned with. 
Of course, Bruno goes for an X defense, so it does about half damage. I go for fly again, of course, another X defense, but thankfully, even with the two, I'm still able to knock out Hitmonchan, and I should be good, I hope. Well, Hitmon leaves a one hit KO with Ice Beam. Onyx, of course, is also. Machamp is not, and it goes for submission, but fly, so long as I don't miss, should knock it out. Not a super high chance of missing, and I don't, and there's Bruno. Again, not difficult, but hey, I commentated a Bruno battle, it's been a long time. But now it's time for everyone's favorite battle, the Agatha Lottery. Hypnosis, Confuse Ray, oh boy, what fun, I don't know if I'll outspeed either of the Gengar, so we just kind of have to hope we get decent luck. So, Gengar number one does outspeed, but it goes for Nightshade, does damage, but honestly one of the better moves it could go for. I decide to go for Ice Beam for the accuracy and to see how much damage it does. The answer is not enough. I get a critical hit, but it doesn't knock it out, meaning Ice Beam's not even doing half damage. So I should go for Blizzard in the future. But Agatha now decides to swap Gengar into Golbat. Well, I'd already selected Ice Beam since Gengar only had a small bit of health left, and that just got rid of Golbat, so that was good. Now I do level up. Maybe I'll outspeed Gengar? No, but it goes for Dream Eater. That does nothing, and I knock out Gengar. That's two Pokemon down. Now, I was curious how much Blizzard would do against Haunter, and it misses, of course, but Agatha swaps out, so... I don't get punished for that kind of poor choice. It would have been a two-hit KO anyway. Arbok, I have no idea if Ice Beam would have one-hit KO, so I went for Blizzard, and it does one-hit KO. That's great. I don't want to get hit by Glare. Being paralyzed is super awful, especially because the remaining two Pokemon can confuse me. Now, because my curiosity got the best of me, I decide to go for Blizzard again, and it almost knocks out Haunter. That's pretty good. If only I was one or two levels higher, would have knocked it out, and she swaps again into Gengar. The swapping is very good. So, Gengar goes for Toxic, which isn't that bad, honestly. I go for Blizzard, it's doing about half. Now, I thought Ice Beam would have done enough damage to knock it out, so I go for it, and I was wrong. I don't know why I thought that. However, as long as it doesn't go for Nightshade, I will win, and it goes for Nightshade. I mean, it's not totally illogical. I was worried about the 10% miss chance. I already missed against the Haunter. I thought Ice Beam would knock it out. You know, it happens, and that's annoying. And this is exactly why I don't save between Elite Four members. So I can't just experiment and see what works. There's a little bit of pressure. I have to get it right, because if I don't, I have to battle Laurelie again, and Laurelie happens to be the scariest one. And that's part of the reason I went for Ice Beam. I was going for the safe play. It turns out the safe play was the wrong play, and now we have to try this all over again. Well, this time the battle goes a little different. I go for Ice Beam, but she goes for Growl. So I go for Ice Beam again, and this time Laurelie goes for Rest. Now, because she used Growl, Blizzard will actually do just about as much as Fly will, and it's quicker because it doesn't take two turns, so I go for Blizzard two times while Dugong is sleeping. After it wakes up, I decide to go for Ice Beam, and it goes to sleep again. Lovely. Now, I know I need Blizzards for later in the battle, so I continue to go for Ice Beam, even though it's doing a little bit less damage. Because Pokemon can't attack the turn they wake up, Rest essentially takes three turns, so I've got it about at half health, and it goes for Growl again. That's actually really good. It's boosting my special just a little bit more. I continue to go for Ice Beam. It misses with a Growl. It misses with a Takedown. And I get a critical hit. It is so close. Just don't use Rest. Oh, God. And that's a reset. I don't have enough power points now to get through the battle. My attack is too low. I'd need to get a critical hit like every turn with Fly. This is why Laurelie is just so frustrating. And honestly, yeah, maybe I could have won, but it's just not worth it. Let's try for another battle and hope I get a little better luck. All right, so this time I decide to go for Fly. I have no idea why. It's, it always goes for Rest early on in the battle. I know this. Heck, it tried to go for Rest while I was in the air. So I hit with Fly. Of course, it goes for Rest. And I'm just going to keep spamming Fly. I'm just going to go for Fly every single turn. Hope I get a combination of critical hits and her not using rest, and maybe I'll get past Dugong. Well, there's a critical hit, that's nice, but on the next fly, I miss, and of course, Laurelie rests, so all that progress undone. But while Dugong is snoozing, I get another critical hit, no rest, another hit, and okay, another fly will definitely knock it out, but will it use rest while I'm in the air? Yes, yes it will. The frustration is real, but so are the critical hits. Another third straight critical hit right after she uses rest. What are the odds of that? That's actually incredibly unlikely. But this time, Fly connects, and she goes for takedown. Now I have to make a choice. Do I try Blizzard and hope it has enough damage? Or do I risk a Fly and maybe she goes for rest? 
I go for Blizzard. Who knows if it would have knocked it out without it, but I got a critical hit. Yes! And if you thought that luck was good, I get a regular Blizzard against Cloyster. It gets a critical hit with Spike Cannon, which isn't good, but it only hits three times. Then I get a critical hit with Blizzard. It goes for Supersonic, but misses. And another critical hit. Don't know if that one mattered, but loving this luck. Now I think we've defeated Laurelie. Just can't get too many critical hits for myself or some other crazy situation. By the way, just so you know, Ice-type Pokemon can't be frozen, so at least I don't have to worry about that. All right, so time to set up three Amnesias. Ice Beam knocks out Slowbro. Ice Beam knocks out Jinx. Now, please hit and no crits. Well, it hit and no crit, but Confuse Ray, of course. Can't, can't all be good luck. Thankfully, I don't hit myself a Confusion, but I get a critical hit. So, yeah, amazing. At least Lapras goes for Confuse Ray again. I figured for sure it would go for Blizzard and get a critical hit, and I would be knocked out. So, that was nice. Unfortunately, I'm out of Blizzard. I don't think Ice Beam will knock it out, but that's all I have to go for. And hey, it did. I got the range. And yeah, that's Laurelie. My winning percent versus her is around 30%, which is usually the bare minimum for what I'll do before I start battling extra trainers. And let's be honest, the fact it's the first member of the Elite Four makes it a lot easier. It's not like Lance, where I have to battle all three members over and over again, all of whom, except for Bruno, could defeat me. Speaking of Bruno, yeah, he's really easy, and now I have Ice Beam, so that's good. But just to finish that previous thought, the fact I don't have to re-battle a bunch of trainers to get back to Laurelie makes it a lot more acceptable that she's inconsistent, versus someone like Agatha or Lance. Speaking of whom, now that I've defeated Bruno once again, it's time to see if I can get past Agatha. We still haven't seen Lance or the champion, and as you know, those battles can go really poorly. But honestly, I feel like I should have won the last battle, so I'm optimistic here. Well, turn one, she swaps right into Golbat. I go for Blizzard because I learn, and of course it gets knocked out, so that's one Pokemon down, but Golbat's not one I was worried about. Now, of course, Gengar goes for Confuse Ray, which is the second worst thing other than hitting with Hypnosis. Thankfully, I don't hit myself in Confusion, go for Blizzard, and what a better move. Doing over half, so I can knock it out with Ice Beam, so long as I don't hit myself in Confusion. Or if I get put to sleep, thankfully she uses Confuse Ray. I do hit myself in Confusion, however, so she'll have another opportunity. Unfortunately for her, she goes for Dream Eater. No, Agatha, I need to be asleep. And speaking of which, it's time for Gengar to take a nap in its Pokeball because I just knocked it out with Ice Beam and there are three Pokemon left to go. Now, I'm pretty sure Blizzard wasn't arranged to knock out Haunter and I didn't get unlucky, but I go for it anyway. Don't hit myself in Confusion and I get a critical hit. So, yeah, I think that definitely mattered, but I will take it. And if you thought I've been confused long enough, don't worry, I'm confused no more. Blizzard hits once again, and we just have Gengar. All right, this should work. Just don't confuse me turn one, and we should be moving on. All right, Nightshade I will definitely take. Blizzard hits, and a critical hit. Perfect. All right, now she goes for Toxic. I hit with Ice Beam, and that is Agatha. Honestly, I got definitely some good luck there with some critical hits, but typically when you don't get put to sleep, Agatha isn't too bad, and she didn't use Hypnosis a single time in this battle. That's pretty good. And now we get to move on to Lance. Now, obviously, I'm not too worried about his Dragon Pokemon because I have Ice moves. Gyarados, on the other hand, I don't know. Could be a bit of an issue. I'm not really sure. Let's see. Well, I opt to go for Blizzard. I hit and then Gyarados decides to hit back with its best move, Hyper Beam. It does under half, which is very good. It needs to recharge. Blizzard will knock it out, but I miss. Good thing it has to recharge. I don't miss with the next Blizzard, and that's Gyarados. Now here I make a mistake. I should have mimicked agility so I could outspeed Aerodactyl. Instead, I go for Ice Beam and knock out Dragonair 1 and Dragonair 2. Aerodactyl does outspeed me and goes for Bite. It gets a critical hit, and if it got a flinch, I could have lost. I go for Ice Beam and knock it out, but it also could have gone for Hyper Beam and got a critical hit. Really just a very poor play by me. And that's honestly three or four times I'm looking at this footage and just wondering what the heck was I thinking? Not my best run at all. Especially because I didn't know if I'd outspeed Dragonite. I do and I knock it out, but why not just mimic agility? Like, there was no way Dragonair was going to knock me out. It would have made this entire battle totally safe unless I got the 1 in 256 miss but you can't plan for that. I mean, once again, I win on my first try, but nonetheless, I feel like I need to acknowledge this because I personally hate when I'm watching a YouTube video and I'm wondering why they're clearly doing things that are suboptimal and they don't acknowledge it like it was the best play ever. No, this has been a bad run for me so far, 
but all might be forgiven if I can make it through the champion. It's my first attempt, so again, don't have a concrete strategy, but hopefully I will start to do some good moves and the video will end here earlier than usual. So let's get to it. Pidgeot no longer has agility for me to mimic, so I'm just gonna go for Blizzard. I outspeed, Blizzard hits, down goes Pidgeot. Now Alakazam is very scary if it goes for Psychic, which it does, please no special drop, okay? Blizzard does about half. All right, maybe Fly would have done more, but I was worried about Reflect. Thankfully, it goes for Psybeam, it doesn't confuse, and I miss with Blizzard, oh no. It then goes for Recover, oh no, I'm running out of Blizzard power points. And at least it hits once again, but if it uses Recover, that could be really bad. And to that end, I'm really worried about being stalled by Blastoise, so I decide to go for a bit of a Hail Mary strategy. I mimic Recover because at least with Recover, I have more opportunities to use my Ice moves and more opportunities to get a Lucky Freeze. It just seems like the right play based on how this is going, and Alakazam went for Reflect, so I wasn't really punished for the extra turn. If it goes for Psychic and gets a special drop though, that would be just awful. Thank goodness, red and blue AI is terrible. Down goes Alakazam. Huge sigh of relief. And it's funny, we go from one of the scariest Pokemon to the least scary Pokemon right on. Ice Beam. Goodbye. That is half the champions team defeated, but we still have some very tough Pokemon ahead. Thankfully, our canine does not know Fire Blast. I go for Ice Beam. I get a critical hit, but it's still not a 1 KO. It goes for Ember. And oh my god. Oh my god. I I don't know what to say there. Thank goodness I have Recover. Like, holy moly. And yeah, I don't want to risk being put to sleep by Executor. I'm going to Recover right here. It goes for Ember. No critical hit. I recover again, goes for Ember again, I'm at 111 health, that's not too bad, and I knock it out with Ice Beam. That should be good enough at least for Executor. Again, very nervous about being put to sleep, so I go for Blizzard, no idea if it would have been a 1 KO otherwise, but I get a critical hit, and holy moly am I glad I have Recover, because Articuno only has one more Blizzard, and we have Blastoise with Hydro Pump. This could go very poorly. I use my final Blizzard, no critical hit, no freeze, it goes for Bite, not too bad. Now, I'm taking no chances. I'm going to go for Recover. I want a critical hit Hydro Pump to be a range. Of course, it goes for Withdraw, but still. Better safe than have to do this all over again. I go for Ice Beam. I get the critical hit, but it goes for Hydro Pump, and it does 65 damage. So, very good thing I recovered. If it got a critical hit with Hydro Pump, I would have lost. And I'm pretty sure the next Ice Beam will knock it out. It does. And what a run. Man! I expected these legendary bird runs to be pretty boring, but they've been anything but. Articuno, way, way better than Moltres. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. I mean, if I had to put these legendaries in the tier list, Mewtwo would go all the way at the top in its own tier. Moltres would go below Poliwag in its own tier, above Pikachu and the rest. So in a third tier. And Articuno, I think, doesn't deserve its own tier. I think it's in the Ghastly tier, because it was still kind of inconsistent. Sure, it was an hour quicker, but I don't know. From a difficulty perspective, I've done so many more of these runs since Ghastly. Plus, its stats are better, and I know I shouldn't hold that against it. But honestly, Ghastly didn't have as annoying a time with the Elite Four. I don't know. The tiers are arbitrary. Maybe Articuno should be in its own tier. The fact is, tiers are just kind of fun. They're not supposed to be super serious. The question is now... How about Zapdos? Is it going to be below Moltres, or is it going to give Articuno a run for its money? Well, you'll have to find out next time on JRO's 11 Red and Blue Solo Series. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.